Okay, it looks like we are live, and it looks like we are about coming up on one minute late. It's 4.30 and 52 seconds as we speak on the East Coast in these United States. The East Coast, and I guess this is normal time, not daylight savings time. I get it confused, but I think this is the real time. So, um, governments, how can they, can they, can they screw anything up any more than they already do? Yes, they can, and they will. Give them enough power, they'll screw it all up. Okay, so anyway, yeah, daylight savings time is another genius move to make things better when they don't know what the heck they're doing. Um, let me see if I can find this broadcast on the channel here. There it is. <clears throat> Wear your watches. Power, Speaking of wearing your watches, Brief It dances in the house. She wa She wears her watches. <laughs> Absolutely she does. She is no joke. So she wears her high-end watch. She, she has a Grand Seiko stunner by any uh, measure. It's a stunner. It's a solid 18 karat gold with a 9F movement. It's a rare model here in these United States. It's the SBGX038. <clears throat> and she not only wears it, but it got slimed. We talked about that in uh, the last video. It actually got slimed during a uh, recording session for one of her music videos, briefitdance.com, you'll find all that. Let me go ahead and show her website while folks are coming in here, briefitdance.com. Actually, that's how you donate to her. That's the QR code if you want to freeze frame that and go ahead and make a donation. And that is uh, on briefitdance.com. So we'll go up to the top here and you can see briefitdance.com. It's her web page, not really a website, it's a page, it's one page, but it has a lot of information on it, a lot of information. Rolling records, there in the house. <clears throat> I want to invest and I want to learn. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Roth IRAs. Hey, get yourself a Roth IRA. I think Brianna's going to be getting one for herself. Get yourself a Roth IRA, max it out every year, and try to get some major league gains in there. And those gains are not taxed. Those gains are tax-free. That's the beauty of a Roth, is any growth in that later in life, when you take that out, there's no tax on that. Whereas with a normal IRA, you put money into the IRA that has already been, no, I'm sorry, not been taxed. You, you're tax-deferred. You don't pay taxes on the money you put in a normal IRA. But all the growth in that IRA is taxed when you take it out. A Roth, you pay the tax on the money, income tax, just like you normally would, and then you put it in the Roth, and then the beauty of it is all the growth over the years is tax-free, and the growth is usually substantially more than the money you put in. So you come out way ahead with a Roth, uh, generally speaking. <clears throat> so there's a little, some little pearls of wisdom there. And Brief at Dan says, thank you, bull, bull, bull. And let's see, um, <clears throat> so here's the thing, it, 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 right now, don't like to give financial advice on this channel, but this is something that I do from time to time in my Roth, uh, because again, the gains you do not pay taxes on. So the Bitcoin that I've bought, and that I have some deposited with BlockFi, some on my Trezor hardware wallet, that's, that's fine. That, that's buy and hold. I don't trade. I don't do anything with that. But the GBTC that I own, sometimes I will go in and out of that because GBTC is a Bitcoin trust. They basically, it kind of follows Bitcoin's price. If Bitcoin's price goes up, it goes up. Yeah, pretty much the way it works. There's some nuances there, but that's the way it works. But anyway, it's volatile. It's up and down, up and down a lot, right? So, yeah, you can go in and out of that stock. If it takes a big hit, like last week it took a big dip, you can, if you have some money on the sidelines, you can buy in and then you can ride it back up and then you can sell and just repeat the process, rinse and repeat. And you can make some pretty significant money if you can find something like that that's volatile and you ride it up and down and you, you buy in and out of it. <clears throat> With the understanding that at some point you might miss out 
on big gains because you might sell and then it might take off and just go crazy and you might miss out on that big run. You just have to, you know, realize that that's, that's the, the risk you take when you're moving in and out of a stock like that. But if it is consistently kind of going up and down, if it seems to be in a trading range, which it's been in for the last couple of weeks where it's kind of going up and down, up and down, you can definitely do some some moves. I don't like to use the word trading. You, know, you can definitely make some moves and um, and uh, and 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 increase your your revenue pretty quickly. And if you do that in a Roth, the beauty is all those profits are tax free. See, the problem is if you trade on like an exchange on like Coinbase or something like that, you wouldn't. You re well, you could, I guess you could use Coinbase Pro, but if you use some other exchange or whatever that has lower fees. And you're in and out of trades like that, that's all taxable income. So that's where it, it generally is not really worth it to do because by the time you pay all your taxes and all, you're really generally not going to come out ahead. Whereas if you do this within a Roth, all that profit is tax-free. Pretty, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet stuff. We in Panama do not pay any tax on capital gains for money invested in any kind of financial asset. There you go. Good move, Carlos. Carlos is making moves. I'm not surprised. All right, let's go through the buttons. I want to play with the buttons here for a second. There's the Little Treasury logo in the upper right-hand corner. Steve at Little Treasury. Wow, we got a big storm coming through here. Rain is like really coming down. And I've got a window open, but the wind is blowing away from it, so maybe I'm okay. I might have to get up and close that window. Just a heads up here. All right, and this is just this, the Mid-Atlantic TV logo. And this is the stunner, the gold stunner, SBGY002, with a French cuff. This is, this is a Brianna stunner, the 038 and the 002, with a faux pay in the foreground. And there's my 002 stunner out in the sunlight. There's another shot of that stunner. You can't have too many shots of that. There's the two through one. Speaking about watches I wear, there's one that I wear. I wear it regularly. It takes a beating, and it still looks great. And there's the lovely Lady Brianna that we mentioned earlier. There's the 005 stunner that I sold. There's the money clip with the Rolex Date 8, 18238 that I bought new, sold a couple years ago. There's another picture of the 18238. And there is the red sub, which is in the thumbnail of today's show. The red sub, and we're going to talk about that. There's the faux pay, two of them. And there is a close-up of the 231, another close-up. There's Steve with the faux pay and the 231. And now let's go back to the red sub. There you go, red sub. They're a valuable watch, right? Look at that watch. That watch has been worn and used. It was worn and used by me before I sold it to Paul. And then Paul uh, has worn it and used it. He takes good care of it, but he wears it and uses it. He sure does. So, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about actually wearing these watches and not preserving them as an investment? What do you guys think? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, this is, is excellent advice for me. I trade. Okay. Um, super sweet. Wow. Um, what a beauty. Uh, my financial advice do not live in Spain in most places in Europe. <laughs> I don't blame him. Oh, Brianna says strong hands and hold on. Hold on for dear life. That's what that stands for. H O D L. And David's in the house. Hi, Craig. And so what brought this up is I, I saw some more postings in a couple of the forums about, you know, this one guy had a little scratch on his Rolex. And, I mean, it was really minor. And he's all upset. And he said, what do I do? You know, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, my goodness. If, there, if, if he doesn't have anything else to be concerned with in his life than a little tiny scratch on his Rolex, I don't know what to say. Um, a stainless steel, his was stainless steel, a stainless steel watch is going to scratch. It's just the way it is. It's, it's going to get scratches on it. 
and over a period of time, it'll develop a patina that it'll look fine even with those scratches. It, it's not going to be a big, big deal. I mean, look at this one here. That's got a heck of a patina to it, right? It still looks fine. It still looks fine. It's it's got hey, it's got some wear and tear. Let's face it. Let's not you know let's not color code it here. It, it's got some actual wear and tear on it, but it still looks fine, and it's still pretty valuable. Now, would it be more valuable if it was in box, box and papers, never been worn? Yeah, yeah, because I'm sure that's going to be very rare to find one like that. But look at the cost you would have paid to do that if you would have bought that thing in let's say 1978 brand new in the box papers and everything and set it aside since 1978 imagine the the profit you would have lost out on if you would have invested that that money properly right it'd be worth a lot more than a mint condition red sub i can tell you right now if you'd have bought for example apple stock when they first came out and just held it <laughs> And then later parlayed that into Amazon stock when Amazon came out and just held that, right? You'd be like a, a multimillionaire, right? That's how much money you'd have. You'd be a multimillionaire with just the money from that red sub as your starting point. And people say, oh, well, you know, you couldn't pick stocks like that and hold them for that long. Nobody does that. Well, nobody holds a red sub in condition in the box since new either. I mean, it's, that's a rare occurrence, right? So we're comparing apples to apples. We're comparing rare occurrences to rare occurrences, right? That's how I see that. Um, and David says, hola, amigo, to Carlos. Okay, they're, they're speaking the lingo. Uh, Durr messaged me on, um, uh, on uh, Facebook, Der Stiefel, and where is he? How come he's not in here? I mean, he, he asked for a show. He said, we haven't hung out and all. I said, I'll try to do a show. I think I said I'd try to do one today. I, th I, th I think I said I'd try to do one soon, but soon, it, that's today, the next day. Where is he? Where is he? He's mi missing in action. Okay, so another thing I wanted to talk about, uh, diesel engines. As you guys know, I've been looking at possibly buying a medium-duty ambulance, retired ambulance, that in really great shape to make into a mobile office slash mini RV type of thing. I've been looking at those, and I've also been thinking about buying a motor coach, either a Prevo or an MCI motor coach, 45-foot, uh, with the Detroit Series 60 diesel engine in it. That's a great engine. So I've been researching these things quite a bit. And, and I'll tell you what, I found out some really interesting things. <clears throat> the modern diesels have, have a lot of issues, and it's mainly because of the emissions control systems that they put on these things, mandated here in the U.S. Starting in about 2002, they started doing the EGR, exhaust gas recirculation system on diesel engines. It started on gasoline engines before that, but on diesel engines around 2002, that started. Those give some trouble and cause some wear and tear on the engines that they otherwise wouldn't have. And then they started putting in around 2007 or so, maybe a little before that or after, roughly 2007, they started putting in diesel particulate filters. They call it the DPF system, and those are very problematic. <clears throat> then, a few years after that, I think starting around 2010 or so, they started with the DEF fluid, uh, the system that also required DEF fluid, in addition to that particulate, particulate filter. All these things are added on, right? And that causes a lot of issues. <clears throat> But what's interesting is some ambulance companies are allowed to order their, their trucks with all that deleted. <laughs> they don't have to have all that pollution control stuff. So some of them don't have that, right? So the engines run a lot better, fewer maintenance issues, 
Uh, my buddy texted me in the middle of a show. And so that's kind of funny. And the other thing is there's these companies that do a delete. They'll do an EGR release, delete. They'll do a DEF delete. They'll delete all this stuff. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. And, the you know, the EPA is like, yeah, yeah they're, they're all upset. And they claim that they're doing this for off-road purposes only, off-road purposes only, and or like if you drag race your truck or something, right, certain use cases, you don't have to have the pollution control stuff on there, right? But to drive on the street, you're, you have to have the stuff on there, right? <laughs> so I think it's hilarious. So I called one company that does this sort of thing. They've got a location over in Delaware, and... Uh, the company has various locations, and they've done like 50,000 trucks last year. They've done the delete on them. And the guy tells me exactly what they do, and he says, yeah, the way we do it, you can't even tell by visual e examination that it was done. When we do the particulate filter, we, we just take, take it out, and we just clean out all the stuff, and we just put it back, <laughs> and it's just like a straight pipe, right? And we, we reprogram the computer so it doesn't even know any of that stuff's there. And it runs great, and you're, you're good to go. And, he, and, and then he says, oh, but this is for off-road use only, you understand. And so it's a total scam, but uh, I think it's pretty funny. I think it's pretty funny. It's not funny what the regulations have done to diesel engines, crippled them, basically. And in, in California, they're, they're straight up outlawing them. They're, they've got a time frame where at some point you won't even be able to drive them, period, on the road. Uh, even if you're coming in from out of state. You'll just be stopped at the border and, I guess, shot. I guess they shoot you on the on, on site if you're driving a truck without all the crap on it. So, um, <clears throat> David, what happened with the auction, Craig? Okay, so there was one vehicle that I was bidding on that got withdrawn because they decided to sell it to a neighboring community. That's one of the recent ones I've, I've been bidding on. Another one I bid on that had the Mercedes engine... I dropped out because it was um, it got up to over ten thousand. Uh, I'm sorry, it got up to over fifteen thousand, and I dropped out. I really didn't want the Mercedes engine. This is the one here, that uh, good looking rig, re really good looking rig, but it's got two hundred thousand miles on it. And it has the Mercedes engine that can be problematic. You can do a delete on that engine which might save it, but uh, can be problematic. And so I dropped out on the bid on that. That sold for 15400 Yeah, the buyer's fee uh, sold for a total of 17382 And just to refresh your memory on what this one looks like. And when I first started bidding on this, I didn't realize it had the Mercedes engine. I thought it had the Cat or the Cummins engine. These Freightliners can come with several different engines. And when I found out it was the Mercedes, then I lowered my max bid amount. I would have gone higher if it was one of those other engines or even the international engine. I would have gone higher. Um, but it, it, it's a nice rig. It's a nice rig. Somebody got a nice truck. <laughs> but there's a, the, these come up, they're, they're around, so I'm going to keep monitoring, and I'm going to see if I can find a cream puff that, that checks all the boxes for me. You know, I'm real particular on stuff, folks. I'm real particular on stuff. D, DJI was at 821 in 1978. Since then, it has grown at 8.8% per year compounded. Well... 8.8% is not really that great a return, Carlos. You can do a lot better than that, I think. I think you can do a lot better than that, my friend. Uh, so I'd like to get well north of 10% returns. That's what I look for. All right. And don't get me started on how much my, my Roth is up with uh, GBTC. <laughs> 
I do my risky stuff in the Roth because if I can get real high returns in the Roth, the beauty of that is those returns, again, are tax-free. Now, Carlos doesn't have to worry about that where he is, but here in the U.S., we have to worry about that sort of thing. So that's why I've got a lot of GBTC in my Roth, which is, of course, Bitcoin, basically, which is, of course, high risk, but it's been extremely high return. And so... For me, that's worth it to take that risk in the Roth. And, um, and I've been in and out of it various times. Uh, and I've always kept some, uh, but I've also been, I'll add to my position and pull back depending on the ebbs and flows, right? Because again, no, no consequence. There's no, I don't have to worry about paying the capital gains tax on those trades because it's all within the Roth. That's the beauty of the Roth. So, um, Kyle's in the house. He knows about raw, uh, growth, and he probably has a Roth IRA. I hope he has a Roth. And by the way, high-income individuals, you can do what's called a backdoor Roth, where you roll money from a normal IRA into a Roth, or you can take a, a whole IRA and convert it to a Roth. You pay the taxes on that at the time because remember you didn't pay taxes on money you put into the IRA but the money that you put into Roth has to be taxed first so that's the thing you're paying your tax up front when you put it in the Roth but again you're only paying tax on the money you're contributing to the Roth you're not paying tax on the growth and the growth is the majority of what you end up with in there, well, if you play your cards right, right? The, the vast majority of what you end up with 20, 30, 40 years later, 50 years later, is growth. And here's the other really cool thing about a Roth. You can keep contributing to it basically forever. It doesn't cut off when you get to be a certain age. And you don't have to withdraw from it. A normal IRA, at a certain point in time, you have to start withdrawing money out. They force you to withdraw money out of that IRA. On a Roth, they don't do that. On a Roth, you can literally leave it in there until you pass away and your heirs get it, right? It's really cool. You don't have to take the money out. Like, I don't plan on taking the money out of my Roth probably ever. I'll probably just let it grow and grow and grow. And, uh, and just kind of leave it there because I don't need it. So there you go. Tom's in the house. Good evening, all. Our clocks have gone forward, and I've managed to catch a live show. All right. There you go. At least part of a live show. Carlos is hanging out. And uh, let's see. Kyle says, I do have two Roths, but when I called the IRS last month, they told me that all the gains will be taxed when I take the money out in retirement. I don't know that. It shouldn't. No. No, a Roth, absolutely, you pay no tax. Assuming the money you put in, your money you're putting in has already been taxed, you better confirm that you've really got a Roth. I don't understand you having two. I'm not so sure about that, that you can even have two. I didn't know that was a thing. But I would research that a little bit, Kyle. Something doesn't sound copacetic there. Robert's in the house. Hey, Craig, I just bought an SBGA 401 for my birthday today. Can you send a photo? Please send a photo, or maybe you don't have it yet. Do you have it in your possession yet? Uh, if you do send a photo, I'm going to pull it up right now, SBGA 401. Give me a second. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. I'll cut to it here when I get this puppy loaded in. When I get it loaded in, I like it. Now, again, these photos are never good. <laughs> they have, always have terrible photos on this website. Um... I remember, Grand Seiko knows how to make nice watches, but they don't have a clue when it comes to marketing. But anyway, here, here we go. Here's the watch. And let's see, it's a limited edition. And it is 41 mils by 12.5 mils, which is nice, very respectable. And the movement is a spring drive. Whoa, that's nice. 
Nice. I like it. I like it. I'd like to see it in person. But I like it. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Um, we had our time change over here a fortnight ago. There you go. And I'm just getting just getting acclimated to it. Carlos is in the house. I'm literally hanging on the hammock. Hanging on it or laying in it? <laughs> I think you're probably laying in it, Carlos, as opposed to hanging on it. Maybe, maybe. David's in the house. Uh, he gives a thumbs up. I thought that was the case, but they corrected me when I called the IRS. She was very clear with me, unless she was wrong. Yes, she was wrong if it's a Roth. I have one at Wells and one with J.P. Morgan, both Roth, not traditional. Yes, yeah, she was wrong. Yeah. That's the whole point of a Roth, is that, is that when you take the money out, there's no tax on the growth or, or your contributions. Now, at some point, they might change that law, but as far as I know, they haven't changed it yet. <clears throat> cool watch. I've seen that one in person. Very nice, Robert. And Kyle, let me let us know, does it really look much better in person? That's my guess, is that it probably looks a lot better than that in person. That is my guess, because that's usually the case with all GSs. Um, where is Bree? <laughs> she's here. Um, but she's not on the show. At, you, you guys should ask her on social media to start doing her shows again. You know, you guys, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You, you guys ask her to do shows. She'll probably do shows. Uh, let's see here. The hammock is hanged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or is it hung? <laughs> Yeah, do we have a, a English a English expert in the house that can clarify how all this works? Um, let me think. What else? Um, there was something else I was thinking about. Okay, so we talked about the scam with the diesel engines. Uh, we talked about. Oh, by the way, that's one of the things I like about that MCI, the 1994 MCI that I was looking at. It. Um, has no emissions control stuff on that diesel engine. And that Series 60, that's like one of the best diesel engines ever made. Uh, so that is pretty awesome to have that with absolutely no emissions stuff. Um, Kyle says it looks way better in person. The salesperson told me they are exclusive to the boutiques unless he was lying like the IRS woman. Well, it says right here, boutique only. It says on the website here, Grand Seiko Boutique Limited Edition. So, yeah. I wonder if Steve gets some boutique stuff. Is He's kind of like sort of a boutique, but not quite a boutique. He does get some unusual stuff, but I don't know how all that works. A lot of politics involved, folks. A lot of politics involved in, in, in this stuff. Very, very sophisticated. A lot of nuance. Uh, let me think what else we were going to talk about. Um, let me see if I can... Um, oh, here's... We're talking about wearing your watches. Here's the, here's the scene where, where Brianna's watch got slimed. <laughs> that was hilarious. It absolutely got slimed in the in the video so there you go um and here is the the mci the mci and i love absolutely love the walnut interior these photos are terrible also by the way he this guy took terrible photos but i love the walnut um the the solid walnut or the walnut interior. I, I shouldn't use the term solid because I'm sure some of that is veneered and some of it is solid. But they have a really... Uh, Angola Coach, they're no joke. They When they did their conversions, they're out of business now, but Angola Coach, they were known for their woodwork. So, that yeah, that woodwork is pretty, pretty stunning. Um, hmm. 
Robert says, sorry, Craig, drive home. Sorry, Craig, drive home from Grand Sec. Oh, so you're driving home now? You're driving and listening to the show? Wow, that's pretty sophisticated. I've got, I've got sophisticated viewers here. Um, yeah, we don't want you to crash. Um, uh, excuse me, we don't want you to be like this, like, you know, trying to take a photo while you're driving. And, and like, <laughs> that could be a recipe for disaster. Uh, so let me think what else, um, but remind me if there's anything else we need to talk about, Bree, is there anything I'm, I'm forgetting? Uh, we need better f photographers like Greg. Um, are you still looking at getting one of those MCI? Oh, you, yeah, I just showed it. So we're a little bit behind. I just showed it. So there you go. Yeah, I actually talked to the guy and he sent me some more photos He's kind of a little bit squirrely, the guy. He's got a full-size uh, residential refrigerator in it. Um, he's a little bit squirrely, but we will see. Um, I asked him, she would help me a lot. I shouldn't probably talk about this on a live stream. I probably shouldn't have talked about the diesel stuff either, but, oh, well... Uh, it would help me a lot if, if I could pay with Bitcoin. I would immediately replace the Bitcoin. I would buy new Bitcoin to replace it. But see, what I would save 15%. I would save the capital gains tax, right? If he didn't say anything to anybody and I didn't say anything to anybody, if I just gave him the Bitcoin and he signed over the title, um, that would save me like 15%. Of course, I could immediately buy the Bitcoin back and then my acquisition price would be whatever Bitcoin is at that time, right? So that would be kind of cool. But I, but he was like, oh, I don't know if I want, I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, I don't think he even knows what Bitcoin is. So so that probably, that's not going to happen. So fortunately, I have the cash in the bank. I can just pay him. But I, I would save, literally save 15% if I paid with uh, the Bitcoin uh, of course, technically, I'm supposed to report that and pay the capital gains on it, so probably I shouldn't do it anyway that way. So probably he saved me from taking risk. Uh, Kyle's in the house. Oh, I already read that one. Where do I send the pictures? Robert. Okay, send it to my email, Craig Ship, C-R-A-I-G-S-H-I-P-P. -P. David put it in the chat, craigship at gmail.com. Yeah, Derek's in the house. Craig, we did not cover day dates. Uh, when can you get yours? And are you getting a 36 or a 40? Um, that's a good question. You know, a day date would probably go pretty nicely with that walnut interior. It'd probably, you know, be kind of eat up with class, sort of like that walnut interior. If I was sitting in the dinette and, and, and having a libation and I was wearing a uh, a day date with ceramic sleeves that might that might uh, go pretty nice with that i'm starting derek is starting to he's starting to sway me but then again i think the o2 would look eat up with class in there too <laughs> uh, probably more so probably look classier what do you guys think because the, the brown leather would kind of almost match the walnut you know the brown leather would be picked up by the walnut what do you guys think? <clears throat> what do you think about that? Uh, let's see. And David and Kyle are exchanging pleasantries. Dan is in the house. He says, hello, all. Let me check my email and see if anything's come in. Meanwhile, we'll, sh we'll do a time check on the uh, 231. And speaking of wearing your watches, the 231 just keeps keeps running along somebody else by the way posted the same old thing about uh the same old thing about uh warranty i just these kinds of things just wear me out these people i mean what are they thinking you're spending a ton of money for a rolex watch or grand seiko 
and you're worried whether or not it has a three-year warranty or a five-year warranty. Well, let me tell you something. My experience is neither brand gives trouble within three or five years. That they're robust. They last literally last decades without issues. It's very rare for a Rolex to have an issue within 10 years. Very rare. It's what we call an outlier. It ain't going to happen. Same thing with a Grand Seiko, especially if they have the spring drive or the 9F. Now, the high beat, eh, I'm not so sure about that. You know, that more wear and tear because it's clicking faster and all that, right? So uh, let's take that out of the equation. But let's, let's take the spring drive and the 9F. You're not going to have any problems for decades. Decades. The warrant, you, you, you're worried about the warranty? Are you kidding me? Let me tell you something. There are a lot of, lot of things in life to worry about. That ain't one of them. What do you guys think about that? Is that a radical statement in today's day and age where everybody's worried about warranties? Have they had problems that I don't know about? What's going on? Are, are Rolexes falling apart after like three years? Are they all of a sudden like self-destructing and they need to go in for warranty work? What's going on? Bring me up to speed on this. I'm out of the loop on this. Oh, two is all you need, says David. I think he might be right. David is a wise man. I've met him. David is a wise, wise man. Kyle's in that. By the way, David, if you're out of GPTC right now, you might want to load up. I think it might be getting ready for a little pop. Not financial advice. Just what I'm doing. Just what I'm doing. I think it's getting ready for another pop. Another pop to the upside. We'll see. It's going to be going to be volatile. Going to be exciting. Going to be volatile for sure. But I think we might have another leg up coming. Either that or it's going to go to zero. <laughs> One or the other. Kyle's in the house. I still say that the day date in combo with the 002 would be amazing. Just use the day date in place of the 231 as your sports piece. That might be a way to go. I couldn't read it, though, very well most of the time. A lot of times I'm not wearing my glasses. I wouldn't be able to read it. So, and then I, the other problem is I've really been spoiled by the accuracy of this thing. I mean, it's just stone cold, spot on accurate. Uh, not to mention the comfort on wrist. It's even more comfortable, believe it or not, than my Date 8 was. My 36 mil Date 8 was very comfortable. But this thing is even more comfortable because of the titanium. There's just so many advantages to it. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's see what else. Because we're going to, this is not going to be a protracted show. We're going to wrap this puppy up. Uh, but we are waiting for these photos to come in. I don't see them yet. Let's do another time check. Uh... Let's see. Sellers accepting offers. Okay, folks. Let's do this live. I wonder if Bree's still in there. I wonder if she left. I wonder if she left. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Brand new old stock. Vintage Stetson. 4X Beaver hat. In box. It's six and three quarters. It's Brianna's size. Okay, now let's make a decision here on the channel. Let's see the details. Okay, and it looks pretty good. She doesn't have a felt uh, cowboy hat. See, I think this color would look good on her. I'm not so sure that she likes this color, but I think it would look great on her with her coloring. I think it would look pretty cool. And it'd be forgiving as far as showing dirt. Um, okay, I want, I want input on this, folks. I want input on this. I want input on this hat. Okay, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? I can make an offer on this. He wants $12 shipping. It's in Illinois. 
All right, let me know what we should do on that hat. Let me know what we should do on the hat. Brianna says she's here. Okay, let's get some input from Bree. And I, see, I'm not so sure she would like that color, but I think it's a nice neutral color that would go with her boots. It would go with a lot of things. She says, I like it. Okay. Check your email, Craig. All right, I'm going to keep the hat up in a browser. And I'm going to check the email. And then we're going to have to have a discussion on this. We're going to have to have a discussion. Robert is in the house. He's, he looks like he's double fisting. He's double fisting. Wow. I got to say, wow, look at that watch on the top. Wow. How do I... Let's see, if I could do this, I can zoom in. Wow. You know, they're both nice. The other is a pre-2017 pre Seiko on the bottom. I like the one on the top, though. I like it. I like it. I really do. I'm impressed. I'll tell you, I would probably be tempted to sell the watch on the bottom and just roll with the one on the top. I think I'd be that tempted to do that. Yeah. Let me know, folks. Let me know, folks, what you think, as the Archie would say, what you think about that. Derek says, Craig, can you get that the hat live? Okay, what offer should I make, folks? Tell me what offer. What do you think about the 35 millimeter full gold Rolex Yacht Master? Uh, local seller, one in mint condition. Um, Tommy, uh, is it possible that you can send me a photo? What color is the dial? What color is the dial? I love them. I am super, I, I love the Yacht Master. I love it. And Kyle says, like it? Like what? Be specific. We're talking about various things here, Kyle. <laughs> Root beer. Uh, Robert should have a wrench. Um, Robert, does Robert want a wrench? If Robert wants a wrench, he gets a wrench. That's, that's, I'm, a, I'm in a good mood today. He's been here a long time. Okay. Robert, let us know in the chat if you would like a wrench. We'll do that. Um, okay. Back to the hat. What should we do? What should I offer on the hat, folks? Come on. I need, in, I need input here on, on the channel. I need input. Bree says $40. <laughs> Bree is thrifty. <laughs> she doesn't want to spend much money at all. That's 70 That's 30 bucks off. <laughs> $40. All right. We'll do it. <laughs> oh, Bree. Bree's something else. All right. $40. Uh, oh. Wait, it says enter sixty nine ninety nine or more. Oh, that's for a bid. Okay, all right. So I got to click on make offer, and I'm going to offer forty dollars. <laughs> this is funny. Um, and I'm going to say submit offer. We've sent your offer. Hey, all they can do is say no. That's all they can do is say no. We've had people accept offers like that. I mean, we've lowballed offered offers and had them say, yeah. I mean, we got her hiking boots recently, uh, her Vask hiking boots. We made a pretty lowball offer, and they came right back and took it. So you never know. They might need the money all of a sudden. That's why they're accepting offers. They didn't get any bids, so they're accepting offers now. They didn't have that when they first listed the item. Let's see here. I'll take one for my birthday, says Robert. Oh, he wants the wrench. Okay, let's do a wrench. Wrench time. There you go, a birthday wrench. Now if he comments, he should be a proud wrench owner. Kyle, it comes with a lot of responsibility, though, Robert. It comes with a lot of responsibility. I was talking about the hat, but Robert's watches are great, too. Bree is right. Got to start low. <laughs> LOL. Kyle in the house. 
Uh, Kevin says, Craig sent a pic of a rare GS black snowflake, one of 20, one of 28? Whoa. Okay, we'll look at that. We will look at that. <clears throat> okay, and a rare black snowflake. Wow, I, th that's, I had no idea that this model, first of all, though, I have to say that case is not the same as a snowflake. So I wouldn't really call that a snowflake because the, the whole case is different, the case shape. So it's kind of a different animal, really. It kind of has a snowflake texture to the dial, but mm, I think it's a stretch to call that a snowflake. But that's just me. I'm a little funny on things like that. Okay. Um, congrats, Robert. Yeah, he got a beauty. Uh Great power comes with great responsibility. Happy birthday and congrats, Robert, from the lovely lady Brianna. Lance is in the house. Hello, Craig and all. Um, Lance, what do you think about the hat? Let's show Lance the hat and see what he thinks. I sent an offer in on this puppy. Okay, so here's the hat. So let's run through it again here real quick. This is the lovely Lady Brianna's size. So, yeah. New old stock. New in the box. 4X Beaver. Doesn't really mean that much because they've changed many times. They've changed the, the, the beaver rating systems. And so it's totally out of whack now. They And now you can buy like a 20X Beaver hat. I mean, what the hell does that mean, right? It's, you know, first of all, the older hats the older the further back you go generally speaking the more beaver they've got in them the, if they're a high-end hat right if you get a high-end stetson from like the 1950s it's going to have more beaver in it just the way it is uh so <clears throat> uh the, you know there aren't as many beavers around. They're protected in some areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> All right, what else? Um, uh, that hat looks great from Lance. Okay, Lance likes the hat. Uh, you think Brianna would look good in it? Let us know in the chat. Kevin's in the house. Yes, David, I believe you're correct. Point thirty eight. By the way, speaking of looking great, I mean, she, there was a photo Bree shared. Let me see if I can find it. She shared it on her Twitter. I think it was on Twitter. Maybe it was on Facebook. I think it was on Twitter. It, it's a stunning photo. She's wearing my resist all in it. Uh, let me find it. Let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> I wonder if she has it on her, um, I wonder if she has it on her, um, here it is. I was going to say, I wonder if she has it on her Flickr, but we don't need it. We're finding it here. Wait for it to load in. It's still loading in. Okay, so here it is. Um <clears throat> Here she is in, in, in my resist all. It comes down on her head a little bit far because it's, it's too big, right? But we needed to use it for that video we shot the other day. And I think that's a stunning, absolutely stunning photo, if I do say so myself. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, David, believe you're correct. Point thirty-eight. Uh Kevin D, one of 38. Yeah, that's that's insane. That's amazing. I sent an email. Uh, I sent an email of a Rolex to consider. Okay, we'll look at that. Oh, no. Uh, just realized the day of the week is in Italian. Yes, Brie would look great in that hat. There you go. All right. <clears throat> Let's go check the um, the email. The email. 
Da, 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 da. We've actually got two emails to check out here. Bear with me. This is a six digit, 118238. And wow, the prices are up there, aren't they? They are up there. It is a beauty. I have to say, it's a beauty. Cash wire price. Um, 2001, so it ha probably has the, um, it has the old style clasp. Yeah, see, see the clasp there? It has the old style clasp. In about 2004, they went to the newer style clasp. I like both. I, I really don't have a problem with either. A lot of people like the beak type of the newer one. But, but the, the old style clasp worked fine for me for years. And I think it's a little, I think it lays a little bit flatter, just a hair flatter, but hard to tell. But yeah, that's a, that's a beauty. That's a beautiful, beautiful watch. It's all the money. It's all the money for it. <clears throat> Especially considering it's a, a 2001. Da, 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 da. Heritage collection. There you go. High beat. Yeah. I'm not a real high beat fan. If I'm going Grand Seiko, I'm going um, either 9F or Spring Drive, personally. That's what I'm doing. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> it does look cool, actually. Uh, and no, I, I just missed this comment about having a nicer dial than my gold stunner. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Look at this dial. It, it doesn't get... It doesn't get any nicer than that. It's not possible. And you can't even really tell in this shot here. I mean, you can't really see the texture of this dial. You, you have to see it in person. You really have to see it in person. It is absolutely stunning. I think Kyle's seen one in person. Kyle's seen an 002 in person. And I don't know if... Um, if uh, Carlos is still around, I think he might have dropped out. Maybe he fell asleep in the hammock, but... He's seen this this particular O2 in person, and he said it was amazing. So there you go. Um, Craig, buy it now, please. <laughs> Live. Let's see if they accepted my offer. He just wants me to spend money, I think. I think he wants me to be broke. Is that what he wants? Does he want me to spend all my money? Okay, so, so far... No um, notification on that offer. Oh, they turned it down. Offer declined. Offer declined. Da 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 da. New with tags. Well, I mean, I'll let them sit on it for a while. They've got no bids. They've got zero bids. So I'll let it stew. I'll let them sit on it for a while. I sent two watches. All right, let's take a look at that, and then we're going to wrap it up because I'm, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. Here's, I got one, the Omega. Maybe the other one is on its way. Mother of Pearl. I like the Mother of Pearl. Tommy, I like that. Yes. No joke. Um, yeah, I like this. I like it. I don't like lugs that are kind of stuck on, welded on like that. I just think it looks a little bit funky, but it's not the end of the world. It's still cool. I think it'd be really classy, a lot classier than any steel Rolex. If you showed up somewhere wearing this, at least it's something a little bit special. Right? Looks kind of small. What's the size of this? Um, where does it say the size? Um, 
I don't see the size here anywhere. Uh, well, yeah, I think it's kind of small. I, I can't tell the size from these pictures, but I, I got the feeling it's kind of small. Let's see the exact, oh yeah, yeah, Mother of Pearl, yes, 168-626, uh, 168-628, yes, I'm sure it's stunning. <clears throat> Carla says, I've seen Craig's watch, it is the nicest watch that will ever exist. <laughs> He's probably right, I don't know how they'd ever top it. <laughs> when does Rolex release their new models for 2021, April? Good question. Okay, let's look at the, let's catch up on the emails here, and then we've got to uh, rock and roll. Maybe Lance can pull up the um, the 168628, send me a good photo of that one in 35 mil, uh, that Yachtmaster, uh, model 168628. Maybe Lance can send a nice photo of that that we can show before we wrap the show. And in the meantime, I'm going to look at a... Um, a Grand Seiko that he sent over. Heck of a buy. It's basically my watch and steel. I mean, that's nice. Absolutely. Super nice. Beautiful case design. Actually, it's very similar to Brianna's case. I think that's what it is. I think it's very similar to Brianna's case. I think it's Brianna's watch and steel now that I look at it. But it doesn't have the screws holding the back, which a lot of people would like. And it's still got the lion on the back. That is cool. And that is a good price. And of course, the 9F is absolutely robust. Uh, let's see here. It does not say... Oh, 36 mil, about 36 mil. So it's probably the 35 and a half mil. It's probably the same exact case as, uh, as Brianna's watch. I like it. I like it. Okay, let's see about uh, the next piece. The day date in question. Pull this up. Now this one is also a six digit piece, 118238. And this one is also, um, uh, where, I think I thought I saw the price somewhere. How come I'm not seeing it right now? Oh, for crying out loud, except, yeah, I'll accept the silly cookies or whatever the heck you got going on. I'm, about ready to give up on these folks. I hate all the pop-ups, all the stupid crap. Price twenty three thousand. Uh, price is, is is way up there. Okay, wh where the heck is the description? Well, anyway, this is a terrible website. It's a nice watch, but terrible website. You can't even make the picture like full. You can't even make the picture larger. You you can just do this little zoom routine like this, right? But you can't make the whole picture bigger. Um. Yeah, that's a garbage website. Okay. Uh. Tch -tch -tch. Sent the yacht master. <laughs> you can always count on Lance. <laughs> we can always count on Lance. Lance is reliable, okay? That's what we're talking about. Lance is reliable. Yeah, oh. Yeah, but this is not the mother of pearl. I take back what I said about Lance. He, his has the mother of pearl, Lance. That's not the same dial. Although, I have to say, the blue is stunning. But I think the mother of pearl works also. I think either one is fine. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, th th this is a stunning piece. I mean, my goodness. I mean, th that blows away any Daytona. Any Daytona. I don't care what Daytona you have. This blows it away. 
Now, assuming you have a relatively small wrist, if you're a male, if you're a female, it's perfect size for a female, in my opinion. You know, if she has a decent size wrist, I mean, you can't have a super, super tiny wrist, but you know, a decent size wrist. This would look great on any female. Look great on any male that has a smallish wrist, like let's say under seven inch wrist, it would look fine. Derek says, Craig, buy it, please. Buy what? The day date? <laughs> uh, that's an amazing yacht master. Okay, let's see if um, uh, let's see if Lance found one with the correct dial, though. And meanwhile, I'm checking my uh, mail here. <clears throat> I'm going to delete the, these a couple of messages here. Cleaning cleaning up my inbox live on the show. Okay, and so we'll wait and see if Lance sends a um, sends the correct unit. Uh, I sent the wrong photo. I can send the mother of pearl one if you want. Yes, please. That's an amazing yacht master. A close friend of mine wears one like that and his wife too. Oh, so they both wear the same watch? I can understand wearing a very similar watch, but the same watch? Hmm. I guess that's okay. I guess it's okay, but I think they should wear watches that are slightly different. Uh, excuse me. Oh, okay. Yawning on the show. That's absolutely rude. Um, all right. So we'll see if Lance sends the other one. And then we will figure out a way to wrap this up. By the way, I contacted the... Uh, the Bus Grease Monkey. He has a great channel, by the way, if you guys haven't seen it. Um, his, his channel is The Bus Grease Monkey. And I contacted him. He seems like a very honest, straightforward guy, extremely knowledgeable. And he said if I became a Patreon, which is no problem, I'd become a Patreon of his channel, uh, that he would um, service the MCI if I got it. So I'd have a guy. I like to have a guy annually that I can take it to once a year and just have them go tip to toe, bow to stern, you know, over the whole thing and just take care of any issues and do all the preventative maintenance. I like to change the oil, the fuel filters once a year. I like to change all of that stuff, lube everything check all the belts and hoses, uh, replace anything that's even close to failure, just just head it off at the pass, right? Uh, and so he's willing to do all that. So if I do get the, um, and he's in Tennessee, so if I do get the uh, the coach, I could stop there on my way down to Florida or on my way back, one or the other, and have him do the complete servicing on it. And you can go anywhere from like ten to 20,000 miles uh, between oil changes on those because they hold so much oil. 10,000 miles is probably ideal. You can push it as far as 20,000 if you're running it a lot. Uh, so that's about my annual use case. Even if I take a trip out west, take a trip up north, I'm still usually in that mileage range. 10,000 miles plus or minus a little bit uh, is, is fine for once for an annual servicing. So, okay, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. He sent the correct link. I will cut to it as soon as I get it loaded in. And this particular one is for sale. And, again, not a great picture, not a great photograph, but, yeah. I think it's fine. I personally prefer the blue, but I think either one works. Either one works, in my opinion. And I'm sure it looks better in person than these silly photos. 
Okay, and so this one is uh, 14,800. And this was in, in, this one is in New York, New York. That is a cool watch. That is a cool one. Yes. Where's the description down here? Here we go. Uh, let's see. Your manufacturer, they don't give the exact year. Um, they're calling it a woman's watch. It really isn't the woman's watch, but oh well. Um, a lot of ladies wear them, but... It's really, it's really unisex, right? Uh, so, okay. I say absolutely. Carlos is in the house. Diamond indices. Yes, absolutely. I just like the look of the blue one. But again, in person, I think this one would probably look great. I think it would look better than those photos would. Um, those photos don't, just don't do it justice, in my opinion. All right, I think we're going to wrap it up, wrap it up. There's the 002 in the sun, just one more time. And there's another one. And there's the, a couple of gold stunners with the faux pay bracelet, folks. Faux pay, that's the way to go. It's the way to go. All right, we're going to call it a day. It's been a successful broadcast. Been live for about an hour. So everything is under control once again. It's a good it's a good good life.